So I just wanted to record a really brief video for you showing you the three keys to finding and attracting the best tradespeople for your business. Now, a lot of uh, companies, they try and expand, they go out and do all the hard work and, and do the marketing and win all the work. And then all of a sudden, they just can't find the people to fulfill those contracts that they've got and won. And that can be really frustrating and worrying. Um, you can have a bank of work, but just no one to deliver it. So that's uh, that's annoying. And then, or if you do go and uh, bring certain tradespeople on board, you try them out for a bit and you find out they're just absolutely useless and you don't want them anymore. And that goes and affects your reputation. Uh, it can be stressful and it can cost you a lot of money too. So for that reason, a lot of businesses struggle expanding because they just can't find the right people to bring on board. So how do we find the best tradespeople, even though there might be a bit of a skill shortage in the country? Well, let me just share my screen with you and I'll show you a brief model for the three keys on how we do that. All right, so uh, ignore me for my dodgy drawing and handwriting here, but here's our triangle model. And let's say what our aim is, of course, is to um, get the best tradespeople. And we'll say trades people rather than trades men, because there's a lot of uh, women out there who are excellent tradies as well. So uh, let's find the best trades people. So how do we go and do that? How do we find the best trades people? Well, one of the big frustrations with, when you're looking for decent trades is that there's clearly a skill shortage. So that's a big problem for many people. Um, there's not a lot of uh, youngsters coming out of college now, they sort of want to do computers and things like that, don't they? So sometimes they can feel like there's a real skill shortage in the country and you just can't find the trade. So that's, that's frustration number one. The second thing which holds people back from hiring is that it just looks too expensive. So when you look at what wages good trades people are commanding, uh, you might think to yourself, I just, you know, I can't, I can't get that money off my customers. They're just too expensive. I can't bring them on board. So that stops them them hiring too. So they end up um, paying a lot less money and getting uh, poor quality workers. So that's frustration number two, too expensive. And the third frustration people find, which holds them back, is that you go and find a great trades person and then they go and leave. So you do all that work to find them, they stay with you a bit and then they go and get a better offer and they go and leave. And all that training and everything you put into them has been a bit of a waste. So these are really the, the common frustrations with why people won't hire and can't expand their businesses and find decent trades. So is there a solution to this? Well, yeah, I mean, of course there is. What we want, of course, is when there's, although there's a skill shortage, we want to be able to attract the best talent. Isn't that true? So we want to attract the best. Um, so you might say, okay, well, that's uh, that's easier said than done. How do we attract the best? Well, that's well, that's number one. We'll go into that in a second. The second thing, of course, we need to be able to do is, although they may seem expensive, we want to make uh, profit out of them, don't we? So they may seem expensive to us, but um, we've got to make profit off our workers. Otherwise, there's no point hiring them, is there, if, uh, if we're not making any money. And the third thing we need to do, if we're worried about them leaving, of course, what we want is our staff to be loyal. So if we could, if this was a solution, if you could find a way of attracting the best talent, attracting the best trades, if you could find a way of making profit out of those tradespeople, and you could find a way of keeping them loyal, would you go and hire them then? And would you be able to expand your business if you could do those three things? Well, of course you would. That would be the perfect solution, wouldn't it? So how do we, how do we solve these three things? How do we attract the best make some money out of them, make some profit and keep them loyal to us. Well, there is an answer to that. Three things, well, there's a, two, two things we need to do for, for each of the, uh, the subjects. So if we want to attract the best, the only way we're going to do that is by making our company appealing. Yeah, so no, no, if that's how you spell appealing, no one wants to go and work for um, a company that doesn't look appealing. So if you're a startup business, maybe your uh, website looks a bit rubbish, um, your online profile doesn't look great and you just look like a you know bit of a, a poor builder, um, you're not going to look very appealing to your um, potential tradesperson, are you? Whereas if you had a nice website, a nice portfolio of work, great recommendations online, you had a good reputation, um, you come across professional, 
uh, that's going to be a lot more appealing for, for a good tradesperson, isn't it? So sometimes you have to look at your whole company, your whole company culture, um, to, to, to think, am I appealing? Would I want to go and work for this type of company? So that's, that's uh, answer number one. You've got to make yourself look appealing to attract the best talent. The second thing you need to be able to do is appeal to them psychologically. I told you my spelling was poor, but hopefully I can spell this right. <laughs> How do we appeal to people psychologically and get the, the, the best to come and work for us? Well, a lot, what a lot of people do with adverts is they'll put an advert out to try and attract talent. And all they'll do is talk about themselves or their company. That's how oh, we've been established for 10 years. Um, we're rapidly growing, uh, an, exciting, an exciting team to come and work for, things like that. And they'll just talk about themselves. But some of the best adverts are ones that appeal to people psychologically. So sometimes it can you, you need to think about what is the problem of the person that you're appealing to and what is your solution that you're solving? So for some people, their problem might be that they only want to work four days a week. They want to have a bit of time off. They're sick of working all the hours under the sun. So if your advert was out there and it's attracting them saying, um, are you sick of working five days a week and grafting all the hours under the sun? Would you like to come and work for a company that offers flexi hours or we let all our workers finish early on a Friday? Um, can you see how that would appeal much more psychologically than just talking about your own company? Or maybe you could say something like, are you, are you sick and tired of being self-employed and working for yourself and um, having to chase, uh, trying to win work and chase debt, things like that, and bring up all the problems that a, a typical uh, subcontractor might have? So why not come and work for an established company where we take all this hassle away from you and, um, and you can grow within the business, something like that. So needs a little bit of thought to think about what works for your company, but you want to try and get thinking about how psychologically can I appeal to people? What is my target audience's problem and what is the solution my company can solve for them? If you can do that, you appeal to them on a different level and that will make you look quite attractive. So if you can do these two things, if you can make your company look appealing and professional and you can appeal to your target market psychologically, that is going to attract some of the best talent to at least come and speak to you and, and have an interview with you, which is, which is really important. The next thing we worry about was how are we going to make profit out of our uh, potentially expensive tradespeople that are coming on board because we all know you're not going to get great tradespeople for peanuts. Pay peanuts, you get monkeys, as they say. So we obviously want the best tradespeople working for us. So how do we make profit? Well, one of the things we need to do, first of all, is potentially reframe our offer. So what do we mean by that? How do you reframe your offer? Well, first, you might want to think about uh, you can reframe it in two ways. You can reframe it internally and externally. So think about internally, first of all. If you were going to reframe your offer internally, you would think about when you're potentially pitching uh, a salary to the potential candidate, could you reframe it? Could you do things like we said before? Could you potentially offer that they work flexi hours? Could you offer that they only work four days a week? Um, could you offer um, maybe a lower wage, but then offer them a commission if they hit a certain amount of targets? Um, could you offer them a company van and which might enable you to lower uh, the salary significantly or other benefits like you know paying for their petrol or whatever else so sometimes you might need to reframe the offer slightly which might mean their day rate can come down and however you reframe it it won't cost you as much in the long run so that's that's one way to think about it reframe it internally the other thing you can do potentially is reframe it externally and this is how you then appeal to your clients so when you're pricing work up, um, you need to let your clients know that you've got the best talent working for you. You've got the best plumbers or the best electricians working for you, and they're not cheap, but you offer an amazing service because of that. So if you're out there offering an amazing professional service because you've got the best talent working for you, then you can charge a premium and you should be charging a premium. So can you reframe your offer to your clients? Let them know that, yes, you are charging more, but now you've got a better offer. You're, you're able to offer them a better service. So sometimes you need to reframe it to be able to make profit out of these, uh, these tradespeople that are coming on board. The second thing you need to do with making profit is you really need to crunch the numbers. It's really important. So how do you go and crunch the numbers? What have you got to do? Well, there's a few ways you can crunch the numbers. You could potentially, as we said before, you could look at maybe 
offering them a lower day rate and offer a bonus scheme. So you could say, right, if you deliver uh, or if you if you complete this project in um, a week, then all right, you might be on a thousand pound a week, but I'm, you wanted fifteen hundred pound a week. I'll give you the fifteen hundred pound a week if you can complete this project in that time. So you could potentially crunch the numbers a different way. So they get what they want, but only if you're making profit and you're you're achieving your targets. That's one way of crunching the numbers. And um, a second thing you could do is potentially offer out work on price. So could you bring these tradies on board and then say to them, look, I'm going to give you price work for this this work and make sure you've um, established the correct price rather than risking it going on day rate and uh, potentially losing them. So maybe price work is important. The other thing you need to do too with your numbers is understand what are your gross profit margins. What is what, if if you don't, I've got other videos on that and a podcast all about your your gross profit, but um, you need to understand your gross profit margins. And as long as you can maintain those gross profit margins by potentially upping your prices, then there's no problem with um, paying more for your tradespeople and paying more for the best. So you really need to crunch the numbers because it might not be as as bad as what you think to to pay more to these tradespeople. The last thing we looked at was we were worried about people potentially leaving and we wanted people to be loyal. So how do we keep loyal staff? Well, there's two ways of keeping loyal staff. The first thing we need to do is train them. What's often important, more important to people than you, you think, oh, I've got to keep up in their wages every year because that's the only way they're going to stay with me. What a lot of people want is just to see forward progression in their career. And the only way they do that is if you train them. Could you train someone up to potentially become a foreman um, at some point or a site manager or a contracts manager, project manager, where, wherever it's going to be? So could you send them on other training courses to maybe they might want to work in the office um, certain days of the week, helping out with pricing work or estimating? Could you train them to do that? Um, can you train them to upskill? So, um, you know, if they're uh, a plumber, um, could you send them out to get their gas safe qualification? So you're upskilling them and train them in, in that way. Training is really important and something that often gets neglected, but it will inspire loyalty. If you can train your staff, it will inspire loyalty and they'll feel obliged to stay with you because they can see that their career is progressing forwards because you're looking after them. And the last thing you want to do is, of course, reward your staff to uh, maximize loyalty to you. So rewarding, yes, it could be pay increases. Um, you know, people want to earn more money. That's true. Could be other ways. You you may consider uh, giving um, if it's a really good member of staff. You may want to consider giving them a share in company profits. That could be something you might want to think about. And there could be other. It doesn't always have to be a monetary reward. Sometimes it could just be at the end of the week if they've done really well, let them go home early, or go and get a load of a crate of beers in for for everyone on site. Um, at the, on a Friday because they've all done well. We're going to get a pizza in, something like that. So I hope you found that useful. As we said, there's six key things to focus on. If you focus on those six things, you will be able to find and attract the best talent out there. So make sure that you make your company appealing. Um, you appeal to people psychologically. That's going to help you attract. Of course, you're going to want to make profit. So make sure you reframe your offer and crunch the numbers to make sure it works. And then if you want to inspire loyalty, you need to train and you need to reward. Um, if you can do all, the, all six of those things, you really are going to have a jump over your competitors. You'll have a big advantage because your competitors are just not going to be doing this. So you'll be able to attract the best talent. You'll be able to grow your company and you'll, of course, protect and enhance your reputation because you're only getting the best working for you, which is ultimately what we want. So I hope that really helps you in expanding your construction business. And I know you'll have a lot of success in it if you apply these methods.